to part two of this series on conspiracy thinking. In part one, I discussed the psychology of conspiracy thinking. For the sake of balance, I want to explore a few real-world confirmed conspiracies. In the third and final part of this series, I want to explore many of the most popular conspiracy theories and identify many of their errors in reasoning and evidence evaluation that I discussed in the first video. This might seem like it falls outside the scope of science literacy, but the importance of scientific skepticism, the application of logic, the awareness of cognitive biases, and the evaluation of evidence are all extremely important and relevant here. So let's start with one of the most well-known and publicized real conspiracies, Watergate. The Watergate scandal occurred in the early 1970s during the Nixon administration in the U.S., which attempted to cover it up. In January 1972, a plan was presented to the committee in charge of re-electing President Nixon, which proposed various illegal activities, including wiretapping, against the Democratic Party. A moderated version of the plan was alleged to have been approved shortly after. In May 1972, a burglary occurred at the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate office in Washington, D.C., where phones were found to be wiretapped. A second burglary took place shortly after, in which burglars were caught attempting to steal telephone and other communication records. The Nixon administration denied any involvement. However, President Nixon subsequently blocked attempts to uncover the source of the funding of the burglaries. Soon after, evidence started to mount that implicated Republican involvement in the events, and moreover directly tied the burglars in the effort to re-elect President Nixon. This indicated the likelihood of a conspiracy. When enough evidence emerged in the way of recorded tape and telephone conversations in the White House, and the admission of conspiracy by various key players, and after pressure to impeach Nixon, Nixon resigned, becoming the first and only U.S. president to do so. However, there was never any clear, incontrovertible evidence that implicated Nixon in having planned or of knowing in advance of the Watergate break-in itself. While there's no conclusively established, agreed-upon motive for the events, one primary motivation is usually cited. Nixon had inherited a mess with the Vietnam War. After a report was publicized by Daniel Ellsberg that undermined the U.S.'s legitimacy in being part of the war, the anti-war protest movement exploded. Nixon's attempts to prevent more leaks of classified information about the war ended up in the creation of his own illegal police and detective force, and the carrying out of various illegal activities. Testimony after the fact suggested that the burglars were looking for anything that could undermine the Democratic Party's efforts to take office, and that there wasn't one single motive for the event. However, other more recently released documents have indicated that the break-in was more specifically in an attempt to link Democrats to prostitution. Overall, the scandal ended up in the indictment of 69 people, 48 of which were found guilty and incarcerated, including many top officials of the Nixon administration. Another far lesser known confirmed conspiracy was Project MKUltra, a secret CIA program that began in the early 1950s. The program researched mind control through a series of horrific experiments on human subjects with the aim to develop drugs and procedures for interrogations and torture. The program engaged in many illegal activities, such as using American and Canadian test subjects against their knowledge and consent, and administering test subjects various drugs, most notably LSD. It involved the use of hypnosis, sexual abuse, and various unfathomable forms of psychological torture. The activities were conducted in at least 80 universities and by at least 185 private researchers. MKUltra was indirectly funded by the CIA so many of the participants were unaware of their affiliation with it. Many reports documented the horrible, lifelong disabilities that many of the test subjects were left with. In the early 1970s, 
The program conceded that its goals were not achievable, and the program was halted. Because of the gross ethical and legal violations that MK Ultra committed, the CIA destroyed most of the documents, though a few have turned up over the years in misplaced archives, all of which have been declassified and are available for download. Despite the uncovering of many aspects of this absurd program, many conspiracy theories still exist about the program due to the destruction of most of the documents. Additionally, conspiracy theories exist alleging that the CIA is involved in more secret programs of similar nature today. But let's stick with the evidence that we do have and not make illogical leaps about one confirmed conspiracy demonstrating the existence of other unsupported conspiracy theories. On the other hand, the fact that much evidence was destroyed indicates that there is the high likelihood that we haven't uncovered everything about the program. And the fact that the government would execute something so horrendously unethical itself unfortunately gives credence to the idea that they may do it again in the future. Some have even claimed the program still exists today, but no solid evidence as such exists. These are a couple real conspiracies. I'll cover more throughout the series as they relate to specific scientific issues, such as the attempted manipulation of scientific evidence and the misleading of public opinion by vested political and corporate interests. Conspiracies do occur and are uncovered, but just because real conspiracies have occurred doesn't mean your pet conspiracy theory has legitimacy or will be proven true in the future. The next video looks at a couple of the most popular conspiracy theories and examines many of their incoherencies, both in terms of the evidence and the logical fallacies employed by their proponents, as well as the cognitive biases that fuel them. Join me in part three for that. Thanks for watching.